Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Konodrig here. Welcome back to BeamNG. Today we are on a very special level of, of BeamNG. This is a modded course, but is actually created by B25 Mitch, who is one of BeamNG's level designers. This is a laser scan based representation of real roads, and it is quite fantastic. This week's one hour build off was to build super saloon cars. This is a build sheet, as I call them, created by Gem Knight, who had the inspiration to build some 1995 super saloons, which is interesting because it's the kind of car that I know virtually nothing about. And I figured rather than always just having my wild dreams and, and build styles as part of our series, it'd be fun to throw in some other people's as well. Some of the cars that we created this week, I think we, we struggled to maybe understand and, and really hone in on the exact theme that Jem was going for. Uh, we did end up with a, a very wide variety of cars. I'm going to feature three of the fastest. These three fast cars might not actually be what Jem was looking for. So I'm also going to feature Jem's car at the end on the entire mountain pass here the mountain loop and it was it was a lot of fun to record that and that will be how we close it out but for now let's take three of these cars around the hill climb section of the course including zeppies so a closer look here at zeppies car 476 horsepower from a 90 degree v6 one of the main aspects of this challenge was that it was a battle of the sixes, meaning V6, inline six, or flat six. What you did with them was up to you, but there was a 500 horsepower cap, but let's be real, 500 horsepower would be a lot to put to the ground. Zeppi's car, though, puts 476 horsepower to the rear wheels in a 3,850 pound car. That sounds heavy, but for a car that's this large, really isn't. That's not that's not unrealistic, and it's not unbelievable, and it's certainly something that should be manageable. One thing this car did that was unique was it used an automatic transmission, probably to help with the markets, to help it be in a family sport premium category. All right, now Zeppi's car here is an automatic, and I've done some practice launches because launching the automatic cars is a little bit tricky, or just a little different. So let's see if we can get it off the line here. Give it enough revs into drive and then into sport transmission mode, and that seems to be the ticket. Okay. Now it is also rear wheel drive. This was, I believe, our fastest rear wheel drive car. The all wheel drive cars had a distinct advantage in the on stream testing. We were unable to use this course on stream as the amount of foliage around the place meant we just did not have enough encoding that you could actually even see what's going on. I'm attempting to render this in an obnoxious resolution to try and work around that for YouTube. This course is absolutely too fantastic to not show. Hello, oversteer. Right, finally getting my foot down into it for a moment and then onto the brakes here pretty darn good overall. Just a little bit of oversteer there. My theory was the rear wheel drive cars would fare better on this kind of course than they did on the Top Gear test track because there's not as much of the standing start kind of stuff. The zero or 30 miles an hour up to, you know, 100. So that's a 115.716. And now we move on to Round Tabler's car. I can tell people were kind of struggling with the visuals of these cars. I just don't know that there's enough allowed creativity in this field. Some people did great things and really and really knocked it out of the park, but in general, it's uh, it's a very a very tight design box to go in. This one though ends up being a really quick car in the first of our all-wheel drive competitors. Round Tabler's car is on the smaller side of the scale for these saloon cars, but makes 458 horsepower through a 60 degree V6, again with a turbo, weighing in at only 3,230 pounds. 
You can mine 460 horsepower with 3,200 pounds through an all-wheel drive layout, and this car should be rather quick. I didn't think cars this small would really do it in this category, but it actually does. It scores quite fine in Family Sport Premium. A lot of other things you can do besides just size to make a car work in this category. Alright, this car being all-wheel drive is going to get out of the hole really well. Also a manual transmission. Just a staggering 0-60 to 60 time there. This thing... This thing hooks and it goes. There was some debate on stream if all-wheel drive cars uh, should have been in a different class or, or what was the deal there since they had so much advantage. I'm curious though if the all-wheel drive cars will have less of an advantage up the hills. Or maybe not less of an advantage, but maybe just be a little bit on more of a level playing field. All-wheel driveness certainly does not really help it mid-turn in these long stretching turns. It tends to want to understeer on throttle. As the owner of an Audi, I know all about that. Right. Definitely struggling with it there, but it feels slow, but might be going really fast. I think that might be one of the situations we're faced with here. Well, let's see. As we approach the top of the hill here. Pretty close, but it is indeed faster. I really think almost all of that is off the line at a 113.628. Yeah, I, I feel like if it wasn't for the immense 0 to 60 time, that would be a much closer number. And now we move to Ham Ove's car, which kind of has that Maserati Quattroporte style to it, which was always kind of an awkward look, was it not? Those those were interesting cars. I believe the inspiration was actually the Alpina, Alpina, Alpina B6, uh, if I if I remember correctly from the stream. This was our fastest car on the Top Gear test track by miles. It was really quick. Ham Ove's car pushes the boundaries of the horsepower limit, 498.6 horsepower, and it's only moving 3,780 pounds. It is powering all four wheels, which does mean it's impressive that this car managed to be as light as it is. It is rather front heavy, perhaps something to do with the 3.5 liter Boxer 6 turbocharged layout. I don't know exactly how it ended up being more front heavy than some of the other competitors. It is though quite stout and from that three and a half liters which was kind of the staple size of engine here, it made 409 foot-pounds of torque at 3000 rpm and pretty much to redline. This one had plenty of power in plenty of places. All right now Hamov's car is going to be really quick off the line here. I've given all of these cars a fair bit of testing before doing their runs. This one, I can tell you, drives the biggest. This one drives really heavy and takes quite a bit of care to ease it into the turns. The, the place where this one really finds time is, is between the turns. It rewards you driving in slow and out fast. But this is just really not that kind of stage. Interesting little slide there, it did. You gotta really back it down here, it will hit that guardrail. It's actually getting itself a bit out of its power range, too. But 5,000's good enough to pull from. Last bit of slowing down right there, and then back to the gas. This is where it will shine. Actually, one more bit of slowing down. This one does not like to do that one anywhere near flat out. Now let's see how it gets up the hill. Very close time. So 13.25. A 113.25 is just barely quicker. Just barely quicker than Round Taylor's car. Which is interesting because it's complete inverse order for me. 
Zeppi's car, most fun to drive. Hamlov's car, least fun to drive. But that is the exact opposite of, of the way that they managed to attack the hill there. Zeppi's car was the slowest. Hamlov's car was the quickest. So round tablers was probably the nice middle ground. It was, it was pleasant to drive and pretty darn quick. That's just three of the cars that were entered this week. That's a really tough sign we just hit, apparently. But that gives you a, a pretty good little window of, of what the builds were like. Unfortunately, like I said, I think we may have missed the mark on what Jem was looking for. And I think when you see Jem's car, you'll understand what I mean. I hope that I can get some encoding to work so I can show you that full run of the mountain in Jem's car. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes now. Actually, first, let's look at Jem's car. So here is where we've come from. This is Jem's car. This is what Jem created based on the category of car that he himself wrote. I've faced the same exact thing where I have, I have created one of these build-offs and created a car that matched that build-off. And then what I actually got out of it was cars that were dramatically different. I will say... It is a lot harder than it probably seems to actually write up one of these build-off challenges. And I guess to get the kind of car that you're expecting to get. This car is very much so touring car inspired. I said it would look right in like a DTM or BTCC kind of situation. It, it looks a lot more racy than what we ended up with being more businessy cars. I'm not quite sure how we ended up there. But it is interesting to see the two side by side built to the same specifications. Jem's car uses a 4.5 liter inline 6, naturally aspirated, to get 433 horsepower to the rear wheels, 3,500 pounds. All of these stats are actually not terribly different from the other cars that we've seen today, but styling wise and driving wise, it is completely different. <laughs>
It really is a fantastic course. Make sure you check it out. The link is in the description if you want to find it. And I will see you all next time.